What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and today we're gonna to be doing the final section of the UCAT exam that I haven't covered yet, which is quantitative reasoning. I've left it till the end because I personally think it's probably one of the more difficult sections and it's what I've been putting off the most. But if you haven't seen my videos on the other sections of the UCAT, decision making, situational judgment, abstract reasoning, and verbal reasoning, I've done videos on those this year and also last year. I'll leave a link in the description to a playlist that contains all of those videos if you wanna see more. Now, if you guys are looking for tips specific to the quantitative reasoning section, I would direct you to the video that I posted last year. And there I go into detail about all the tips that I think are really important for quantitative reasoning. But this year, I just wanna recap on a couple of I think are the most important. So first things first, becoming familiar with the on-screen calculator is very, very key. The ability to use that quickly and efficiently is gonna be very important to not waste time. And it, there is a little bit of a learning curve getting used to using it. So I would make sure that you always practice with the on-screen calculator and figure out how to use it quickly. The second thing I would say is improving your mental maths is also very important. There's going to be a lot of calculations that you can do quickly in your head. And if you have to use a calculator to do that, it's going to waste a lot of time. So being able to improve your mental maths that you have most of your multiplications or divisions down and you can at least guess an approximation of a number in your head is going to go a very long way. And then finally, there's a list of equations that you should just know off by heart so that if you see a question where you're going to have to use them, you already know that equation and you can quickly just write it down. You don't have to waste time thinking about it and you can actually get the mark for that question by using that equation. Okay, and then one more tip, which I actually think is probably the most important one, is that you learn to triage the questions that either you are not good at personally. So for example, I knew that tax related questions or questions involving many different time zones, I just wasn't naturally good at or questions that you know are gonna take you a long time to answer. So sometimes I would read a question in quantitative reasoning and I would know just from reading it that this is a four step question or a five step question. And if I recognize that from the beginning, then that's a question that I would just guess and move on and come back to later because I don't wanna invest all that time doing five steps just for one mark when there's probably a bunch of questions after that that are gonna be worth one mark as well, but probably a lot easier. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to Medify for partnering with me on these videos. They are the online UCAT question bank that I've been using for all of last year and for this year in order to make these UCAT videos for you guys. They're just a really good resource that a lot of you have told me has helped you very much. And so if you wanna learn more about it or check it out for yourself, there'll be links in the description down below. You guys can click on those and check out Medify. All right, so let's jump onto my computer so we can start doing some questions. So how many of the studied states spend more than 13.6 million USD on education? So state, state, states, I only see states here. And percentage of budget, the percentage of the social sector budget spent by each state on education. We know that the social sector budget is 80 million. Okay, and we wanna know how many spent more than 13.6 million. So we wanna know what 13.6 million is as a percentage of 80. 13.6 divided by 80, so that is 17%. So if these states here spent more than 17% of the social sector budget on education, um, then we'll add them to the list for this answer. Okay, so we know that 13.6 million is 17% of 80 million. And so here, 17% is here, so only Alabama spent more, so just one state. What is the range? value of USD spent on education by the states shown. So the range is the highest minus the lowest. So let's take the lowest first. California spent 8% of 80 million. So let's find out what that is really quick. So 0 0.08 times 80 million. So they spent 6.4 million. And the highest one, Alabama, spent 21%. So 80 times 21%, which is 0 0.21, is 16.8. So 16.8 minus 6.4 will give us the range, which is 10.4 million USD. If Idaho spends this, Texas spends that, Tennessee spends that, California spends that on the environment, how much does Alabama spend in millions of USD on the environment? Okay, how are we gonna figure that out? Oh, so here's the mean number of dollars spent by the states. So the average on the environment is 13.6. So 9.1, plus 5.6, plus 17.8, plus 11.7, plus Alabama, okay, divided by one, two, three, four, five, is equal to the average, which it gives us up here, for the environment was 13.6. So first we're gonna do five times 13.6, to find the total, five times 13.6 is equal to 68, then we do 68 minus all those things. So 68 minus the numbers that we have here. So 9.1 minus 5.6 minus 17.8 minus 11.7. 
So that's 23.8 left for Alabama to spend. Next, if the mean number of dollars spent by the states on crime increases at a rate of 6% each year, what would the mean expenditure by the states be in four years time? Okay, so there is an equation for this, um, similar to like compound interest, but I don't remember that equation. But since it's only four years, I can do the four calculations and I should be okay. It shouldn't take me too much time. Mean number of dollars on crime is 1.4. So now we need to see a 6% increase each time. So 1.4 times a 6% increase. So let's find out what 6% of that is. So it's this plus 1.4. So this is how much it would be after one year. So I'm going to write that down real quick. One, four, eight, four. Okay. Now this for the next year, 0 0.06 is that plus 1.484. It will be 1.57 after two years. And now we're going to repeat this again two more times. So, but yeah, I would definitely look up that equation. So you guys know it, it'll save you a lot of time. So this is our answer, 176746. So 176400, no, it's this 1.7. Look at how similar those two are. That is very, very cheeky. So yeah, guys, really, it's so important to have a list of those equations memorized. I have them in my video on the UK count, 99%. Okay, so we got everything right, which is great. Um, I have those equations written down in my UCAT 99% video. Um, those are equations that you should just really know off by heart and they'll save you a lot of time when doing questions. In the UK, 50 million people are employed. How many people work in tertiary and quaternary job? So let's find the UK. UK, tertiary and quaternary. So the total percentage of tertiary and quaternary is 61.4 plus 8.9. So 70.3% of 50 million. So uh, 50 million times 0 0.703 is 35.15. Boom. Next question. The tertiary employment sector of Brazil consists of approximately 80 million people. Where is Brazil? The tertiary, did they say? Yeah, okay. Um, what is the total employed population of Brazil? So that's everyone together. So tertiary is 52%, which is 80 million. Um, so if that's 52%, then the total must be very close to 160 uh, million. Okay, so we know right off the bat, it's one of these two answers. So let's do the calculation real quick. So something, so the total times 52%, which is 0 0.52 is equal to 80. So 80 divided by 0 0.52 will give us this answer. 153.84, uh, 0.846. So it's actually 0.85 if you round to two decimal places. Okay, there's approximately 30 million people working in Nepal. How many more people work in the primary job sector than the secondary job sector? So 30 million people total for Nepal. Um, and it says how many more in primary than in secondary. So primary is 80%. So 80% of 30 million is what? 30 times 0 0.8 is 24. And which one was that for? I've forgotten. That was for primary and secondary is 16.5. So 30 times 0 0.165 is 4.95. So 24 minus 4.95 will give us the difference in how many more work in one over the other. 19.05 million. The population of the USA is approximately 330, 78% of which is employed. How many people work the secondary job sector? 330 million is the total population of which 78% are employed. So 0 0.78. So 257.4 million is what makes up all of these percentages here. Of the 257.4 million, how many work in the secondary job sector? 23%, so this times 0 0.23, 59.202, okay. So real quick, I wanna say about the quantitative reasoning section on the UCAT exam. It is very, very heavily reliant on ratios, percentages, fractions, decimal places, um, things like that. Those are the topics that sort of come up almost every single time for every single question. So those are things that you want to make sure that you practice very hard and you sort of understand them very well so that you can intuitively apply what it is that you know to each of the questions that you see. So here's a question that I've just read and I can see that it's going to involve ratios from this over here. It's going to involve some equations over here that might take me a long time to type into this calculator. And then I read the first question and it's talking about 0.6% of the area of the medium body when considering two dimensional, blah, 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 blah. 
basically, I read this question and right now I've determined that I think for me personally, this type of question is gonna take me a much longer time to answer than other types of questions would that are probably coming up in my test. So as a result of that, I wanna skip this question. I wanna guess the answers and I wanna come back to it in the end because I know that I'm going to take a long time to answer these questions. And because the UCAT is such a time sensitive exam, you wanna make sure that you do all the questions that you can do first, the ones that you can get all the marks on first, and then come back to these harder questions that are gonna take a long time. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, how many more calories should a 24 year old woman in her third trimester be consuming than a 16 year old woman in her first trimester? Okay, okay, okay. So let's see what this table is actually about. Nutritional requirements for women. So that's in this category here, 24 year old woman in her third trimester plus 450 for third trimester. So that's 2850 total. And for a 16 year old woman in her first trimester, so that's 16 year old here plus 10 for first trimester. So 2310. So the difference between 2850 and 2310 is 540. All right, so that's the answer to the first question. What is the percentage increase in magnesium required for a 36 year old pregnant woman compared to before she was pregnant? Okay, so there is an equation for this that you guys should all know and that you should all memorize and I'm gonna tell you it right now. It always comes up on UCAT tests. This equation says that the percentage change is equal to the difference over the original. And I'll explain what that means using this question, but the percentage change either increase or decrease is equal to the difference over the original. So here, let's find out what the difference is and what the original was so that we can find the percentage increase. So a 36 year old pregnant woman compared to before she was pregnant for magnesium. So 36 year old pregnant woman for magnesium so 380 when she's pregnant, 310 when she's not pregnant. So 310 is the original and 380 is the new and the difference is 70. So 70 over the original of 310 will give us the percentage increase. 22.6% or 22.58. Next, so what is the average increase in requirement for vitamin A, vitamin C, thiamine and riboflavin for a pregnant 30 year old woman from when she was not pregnant? So the increase in milligrams from vitamin A to vitamin A is from 700 to 770, which is 0.7 milligrams. Okay, so that's the vitamin A increase. For vitamin C, the increase is from 75 to 85, which is 10 milligram increase. For thiamine, it's a 0.4, and for riboflavin, it is a 0.4. So the average of these four numbers is 10.8 plus 0 0.7, so 11.5 divided by four is 2.875 is the average increase. No? What? Yeah, this is 0 0.07, so I take that back. So 10.8 plus 0 0.07 divided by four, 2.715, so that's 2.72. All right, so there they tried to trick us <laughs> with the conversions. So yeah, definitely read the question properly because the UCAT honestly tries to trick you at every possible way that it can. Um, so yeah, make sure you're careful when reading the question. All right, next question. If 278 people pass their driving test in autumn, what percentage failed? So pass percentage autumn, we don't know, okay. 278 people passed their driving test in autumn. Okay, what percentage failed? So 514 minus 278. Whoops. 514 minus, ah, 514 minus 278 will give us the number of people who failed. And 236 as a percentage of the total 514 is 45.9%. So 46%. So that's the fail percentage. How many people passed their driving test in the first two seasons, winter and spring? Okay, so easy. Again, two percentage calculations to do. 498 times 0 0.72 is 358.56. We obviously can't have 0.56 of a person. Did I do that right? 498 times 0 0.72. Yeah, so 358.56 plus 654 times 0 0.43, 281.22. So this plus the previous number, 358. 639.78 and since we can't have 0.78 of a person or can we I'm gonna round up guess we can have 0.78 of a person generally you can't um, but this is the answer that I arrived at which is very close to this and not close to anything else here so I'm gonna stick with it 
In the autumn, there was a pass percentage of 69%. Which season had the greatest number of passes? Mm. So this is an easy question that we know how to do. We're guaranteed to get the answer right if we go through with calculating the question, but it's good to know that this is going to take me four calculations to find. So this is going to take me four steps and this is going to be one of the longer questions to answer. But since it's easy and I know I can get the mark for sure, I'm still gonna do it. But it's just good for you guys to start recognizing which questions will take longer or which questions will take a shorter period of time just by reading them very quickly. 514 times 0 0.69. So 354.66. And then we already did two from the previous question, right? How many people have tests in the first two seasons? So we already did the first two, so now we just need to do summer. So 711 times 41% is 291.51 and now I'm gonna add all those numbers together oh no which season had the greatest number of passes mm -hmm. so that would be the very first one winter boom next if 417 people pass in autumn what's the overall pass rate for the test center rounded to the nearest percentage 417 passed in autumn so 417 out of 514 gives a pass percentage of 81.1% so the overall pass rate for the test center. Oh, interesting. Mm, so we need to add up the number from each of these, but we've already done these three in a previous question. So 417 people plus how many people was in summer, which we said was 291.51, I believe, 291.51, plus how many was in spring and how many was in winter, so 281.22 plus 358.56. So this is the total number of people who passed. And let's see the total number of driving of attempted driving tests now, which is 498 plus 654 plus 711 plus 514, which gives us 2377. So 1348.29 out of 2377 total pass rate of 56.7%, so 57%. If everyone who took the test in autumn passed, how many people passed over the year? If everyone who took the test in autumn passed, how many people passed over the year? So if 514 people passed here, plus this number, plus this number, plus this number, which we just calculated in the previous question. So 514 plus summer 291.51 plus 281.22 plus 358.51. 145.29, so that's closest to 1446. Okay, that was also kind of an easier one, I'd say. Let's see how we did. Five out of five, brilliant. All right, I think I have time to do another question, maybe two, um, so let's do that now. This last one here, on a sold out performance when 1200 seats are filled, how much money is made from ticket sales alone, okay? 100, three seating areas, stalls 600, which costs 66.5, okay, so. Let's start tallying things up. So 600 times 66.5, that is 39,900. And then there is circle 400 times 52.5, 21,000. And then lastly, 200 seats, all of which cost this, apart from 20 restricted view seats, which are that. Okay, so then 180 times this, oops, not 160, 180 times uh, 46.5 is 8370 and then 20 times 37.5 is 750. So let's add all these numbers up. 39,900 plus 21,000 plus 8370 plus 750, 70,020. Okay, boom. Next question. Year six primary school teacher wants to organize a trip with two year six, there are 30 children, including herself, and including herself, two teachers would be attending. The group plans to stay in the upper circle with no restricted few seats. Okay, how much will the trip cost? Theater offers a group rate for every 10 tickets sold to a group, the 11th ticket is free. 30 children in each class, so 60 plus the two teachers. So the first 10 that go in, we're gonna get one free ticket, um, and that's gonna leave us with 51 students left. The next 10 are gonna go in and we'll get one free ticket, which is gonna leave us with 40 students left. The next 10 will go in, plus one free ticket, will leave us with 29 students left. The next 10 will go in with one free ticket, and that will leave us with 18 students left. 
the next 10 will go in with one free ticket and that will leave us with seven. Um, and then we'll have the remaining six students. So in fact, we'll get one, two, three, four, five free tickets. Okay, so instead of paying for 62 people, we're gonna get five free tickets. So we're gonna pay for 57 people and 57 people multiplied by, um, where do they wanna sit again? Upper circle, so 46.5. 2650.5, boom, next. Susan wants to purchase six tickets, but the only set of six tickets in a row left are in the upper circle and two of them are restricted view. How much will the tickets cost Susan? Super easy question. So four times 4650 is 186, plus the two restricted view, which are 37.5 each. 37.5 times two, 75. So 75 plus 186. Total cost 261. Boom. Next question. The musical puts on eight performances a week. If every performance is a sellout, the show makes a profit of 124,500 a week. Um, okay. The production company originally invested 20 million. How many performances will the musical have to sell out before it breaks even, rounded up to the nearest whole number? Okay. So eight performances a week, and in the week they make this much profit. So per performance, one, two, four, 500. Per performance, they make 15,562.5 in profit. Okay, so 20 million, one, two, three, four, five, six, divided by 15,562.5, 1285.14. So this rounded up to the nearest whole number. So 1285.14 is right here. Um, but that is not rounded up to the nearest whole number. Pretty much a trick question. <laughs> Should be one, two, eight, six. Oh, there's also one, two, eight, five. Very cheeky. So it says rounded up to the nearest whole number. So since it's one, two, since it's point one four, we can't round down to one, two, eight, five. So we have to round up to one, two, eight, six. Give me a cheeky four out of four so I can be content. Dope. All right, great. Last question, four out of four, ending on a high note. All right, guys, so that is where I'm going to cut it off for the quantitative reasoning UCAP video. I hope you guys enjoyed and were able to see my thought process when answering these questions live on camera and that it was useful to helping you understand and know how to solve these different questions. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it and leave a comment down below. It helps me and the channel out immensely. And if you want to see more medical school related content from me in the future, subscribe to my channel and you guys will be notified every time that I post a video. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Peace.